Sarah from Japan. Welcome back to another prophetic read along. Okay, I know it's been a couple days. I've been trying to think about, you know, like how am I going to rearrange my videos and stuff. And I've been busy with cleaning up after uh, the Christmas parties at the schools and stuff. So sorry about that. But um, I'm back with another read along. It's uh, currently 5:03 p.m. on December 21st, Japan, Japan time. Okay, and. Um, as you know, everyone thinks, oh, that's going to be the end of the world. No. Um, actually, the Bible says that um, there will be seven years tribulation after the rapture. And then there's a thousand year, you know, reign on earth in the new Jerusalem. So there's at least a thousand and seven years, at least, before the world ends. So relax. There could be some things happening, though, in the very near future. They're already there are already things in play, okay? And there's a lot of prophecies coming to pass, and a lot of them are, are from the Old uh, Testament, okay? Like, for instance, we got Ezekiel 38. It is, um, looks like it's going to happen pretty soon, among other things. And out of Jeremiah, we've read yeah, out of Jeremiah and out of Isaiah, okay? And there's a lot of things that were to foretold, you know, that said in the latter days this will happen, and they're happening, and they have happened, okay? And so anyway, um, I wanted to give a summary of Ezekiel, the, the whole book of Ezekiel before I started, but I don't really have time. In my uh, New King, not my New King James, but my King James Version, I have two King James Versions. I have a small Bible that's like this big, and then I have my large King James Version, okay? So I got my, that's like my, the large one is my sword, the small one is my dagger, and then I've got a new King James that my father gave me. And I've got a Japanese one and a couple other ones, <laughs> okay? Um, I did have an NIV a long time ago, but I didn't like the fact that it didn't, you know. There was a lot of missing words. I noticed that sentences were cut off halfway and stuff, so I got rid of it. But anyway, um, so let's open up our Bibles to Ezekiel 1. When I do Ezekiel 2, I'll give you the summary of the entire book because it's a fascinating book. Okay, so anyway... Let's get started. Ezekiel 1. You can pause the video if you need to, to go get your Bible. Okay. Now it came to pass in the thirtieth year, in the fourth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I was among the captives by the river of Cheber, or Caber, or Cheber, I don't know. But anyway, um, Ezekiel is younger than, I, uh, younger than Jeremiah, and um, he's actually in captivity, and Jeremiah is in Jerusalem, okay? So this is under captivity, but he was carried away actually into Babylon, okay? So um, at the time too, just to, to, just to note, uh, Ezekiel was about 30, I think. But we will discuss that more when I do my summary in the next video. Anyway, so I was among the captives by the river of Cheber, that the heavens were opened and I saw visions of God. In the fifth day of the month, which was the fifth year of uh, King Joha Jehoiachin, Jehoiachin's captivity. The word of the Lord came expressly unto Ezekiel, the priest. Okay, so Ezekiel was a priest, okay? The son of Buzi, in the land of the Chaldeans, by the river Chebar. Okay, the land of the Chaldeans is Babylon, okay? And the hand of the Lord was there upon him. And I looked, and behold, a whirlwind came out of the north, a great cloud and a fire enfolding itself, and brightness was about it. And 
out of the midst thereof as the color of amber out of the midst of fire. So pay attention to Ezekiel. He's got a lot of, he's had a, a lot of interesting visions, okay? And at first you're thinking, man, what, what in the world is he looking at? I mean, is it all imagery? Is it all just, you know, is he's, are these all figures of speech? It's not so, okay? Pay attention though, okay? Anyway, so, and I looked, and behold, a whirlwind came out of the north, a great cloud, and a fire enfolding itself, and brightness was about it. And out of the midst thereof, as the color of amber, out of the midst of the fire, also out of the midst thereof came the likeness of four living creatures. Now you can read about these four living creatures in Revelations, okay? They're up there in Revelations. And this was, they're in heaven, and John sees them, okay? And this was their appearance, and they had the likeness of a man. So keep that in mind, okay? And these are in heaven, too. You can read these up, look these up there in Revelation as well. And their feet were straight feet, and the sole of their feet was like, was like the sole of a calf's foot, and they sparkled like the color of burnished brass. So these sparkle and glow, kind of. Okay, now let's keep in mind, too, Ezekiel and John both were, were in uh, very, very ancient days from our perspective. So, you know, there's a lot of things that sound like like imagery, they're just, you know, like, I don't know, um, images from the imagination or something. But you got to realize that they didn't live in our time where we had so many sophisticated things. You know, like the locusts in Revelation. Um, that's, John was describing them. They had stinging tails and they had like wings and they were huge. They looked like horses. They sound, if you just read that and had no understanding, you would you would be thinking, wow, he must have been, he must have ate something funky or maybe he was smoking something. But you gotta think about it. If he's talking about the latter days, what do we have that's similar to that? We have, we have helicopters, right? We've got helicopters, they're quite similar. They've got that long tail with the thing that looks like a scorpion tail on the end and they, they make whirring sounds and they kind of look like metal locusts. They kind of look like big, huge horses with wings. I don't know. So that's maybe that's what he was seeing and he couldn't describe it. So we have to keep that in mind when we're reading out of you know these ancient books. They're seeing things in the future that they can't exactly explain. All right, so with that in mind, let's keep reading on. Okay, so, um, their wings, and they had the hands of, so verse 8, and they had the hands of a man under their wings on their four sides, and they four, they four had their faces and their wings. Their wings were joined one to another, and they turned not when they went. They went every one straight forward. Hmm, so interesting. As for the likeness of their faces, they had, they four had the face of a man and the face of a lion on the right side, and they had, they had, and they four had the face of an ox on the left side. They four had also the face of an eagle. So there's four faces on here. That means it's uh, square, okay? Thus were their faces and their wings stretched upwards, okay? Two wings of every one were joined one together, and, their, and two covered their bodies, okay? And they went one straight forward, whither the spirit was to go. They went, and they turned not when they went. As for the likeness of the living creatures, their appearances was like burning coals of fire and like the appearance of lamps. It went up and down among the living creatures and the fire was bright and out of the fire went forth lightning. And the living creatures ran and returned as the appearance of a, of a flash of lightning. Now I beheld the living creatures. Behold, one will was upon the earth by the living creatures with his four faces. And the appearance of the wheels and their work was like unto the color of a barrel. So barrel is like a red stone, right? And they four had one likeness. Okay, so there were four of them, but they all looked identical. Okay, and their appearance and their work was was as it a we was it were a wheel in the middle of a wheel. So they got you got a wheel in the middle of a wheel. Okay, so um, where's my my thing just dimmed down? Sorry about that. It's on battery. That's why it does that. Okay, um, when they went, they went up upon their four sides, and they turned not when they went. As for their rings, okay. Oh. I just oh no I'm sorry I just skipped forward I'm sorry okay so where was I so I was reading about the wheels I think I skipped I'm so sorry all right so I'm gonna go back to to 10 so we were talking about the the four-faced creatures right the four four-faced creatures okay with the faces of a man the face of a lion the face of an ox and the face of an eagle okay and then we were going they're going straight forward, and 
So I forgot. I didn't read Chuck. I didn't read verse 13, sorry. As for the likeness of the living creatures, their appearance was like the burning coals of fire, and like the appearance of lamps, and it went up and down among... Oh no, I said I did read that. And the living creatures ran and returned as the appearance of flashing, as a flash of lightning. Now as I beheld the living creatures, behold, one wheel upon the earth by the living creatures was with his four faces. So I just read that. The appearance of the wheels and their work was like the color of beryl, and they had four... And they four had one likeness, and their appearance and their work was was as it was, were a wheel in the middle of a wheel. So you got a wheel, and then a wheel in the middle of a wheel. When they went, they went upon their four sides, and they turned not when they went. As for their rings, they were they were so high that they were dreadful, and their rings were full of eyes. So that's interesting. As for their rings, they were so high, they were very big, okay, and they were very dreadful. They were scary looking. And their rings were full of eyes round about them four. Hmm. And when the living creatures went, the wheels went by them. And when the living creatures were lifted up from the earth, the wheels were lifted up. Whithersoever the spirit was, was to go, they went. Thither was their spirit to go, and the wheels were lifted up over against them. For the spirit of the living creature was in the wheels. When those went, these went. And when those stood, these stood. And when those were lifted up from the earth, the wheels were lifted up over against them. For the spirit of the living creatures was in the wheels. And the likeness of the firmament against the firmament being heaven, okay, upon the heads of the living creatures was at the color, was as the color of the terrible crystal. So I wonder what color was is terrible crystal <laughs> stretched forth over their heads above and under the firmament firmament sorry were their wings straight the one toward the other every one had two okay each covered uh, on this side and everyone and everyone had two which covered on that side their bodies and when they went i heard the noise of their wings like the noise of great waters so they were loud okay and as the voice of the Almighty, the voice of speech, the voice of speech, as the noise of a host, when they stood and let down their wings. Okay, and there was a voice from the firmament that was over their heads when they stood. Okay, so there was a voice from heaven over them where they stood, okay, and had let down their wings. And above the firmament that was over their heads was the likeness of a throne. It was a likeness of a throne, as the appearance of sapphire stone. And upon the likeness of the throne was was the likeness as the appearance of a man above upon it. And I saw as the color of amber as the appearance of fire round about within it. From the appearance of his loins even upward, and from the appearance of his loins even downward, I saw, as it were, the appearance of fire, and it had brightness round about. As the appearance of the bow that is in the cloud in the day of rain, so is the appearance of the brightness round about. This was the appearance of of the likeness of the glory of the Lord. And when I saw it, I fell upon my face, and I heard a voice of one that spake. Okay, so this is um interesting, this thing, this, okay, this throne, okay, as the appearance of sapphire stone, okay, um, and there was someone on it, and we know who that is, right? We know that that's God Almighty, right? Well, it's interesting, um, my daughter, quite a while back, I don't know, like maybe last spring, um, sometimes my kids have interesting dreams, sometimes I have interesting dreams. I don't have dreams very often, though. You know, I mean, I've had probably four or five significant dreams in my entire lifetime, okay, that weren't, you couldn't sum them up to pizza, bad pizza before dinner, I mean, before bedtime, or something other, some other funky food that I ate, you know, you couldn't sum it up to that. Um, I'm very careful about sharing dreams because a lot of times they're not, from him, they're from something else, okay? <laughs> but anyway, uh, sometimes my son has dreams and sometimes my daughter has dreams. And my daughter had a dream once and she woke up and she told me, Mommy, Mommy, I had this dream. And um, I dreamt that there were angels on both sides of me. That these big, tall creature angels, she said, were on either side of me and I stood before a, a big chair. Okay, so she doesn't know the word throne, okay, obviously. But she said, Mommy, there was a big chair and there was a man sitting on the chair, all in white, and his face was so bright that I couldn't see it. You know, and he was talking to me, you know. And um, yeah, he said to her, come here, little one. And then she woke up, she said. But um, I thought that was kind of a neat dream, and this just reading this reminded me of that dream that she had. 
So that's what she saw. She saw a big chair <laughs> with a man in white on it, but she couldn't see his face because it was too bright. So that was her dream. Anyway, um, I'm going to come back later with the outline of the book of Ezekiel. It's very fascinating, and once you get the outline, you can understand the book a little bit better. But this book is fascinating. There's all kinds of things. And um, in the books of uh, Isaiah and Jeremiah, and in Lamentations, the people are being punished. They're being judged by God and punished um, for the sins, not only their own sins, but the sins of their fathers, right? Whereas Ezekiel, the book of Ezekiel, focuses more on individual sin. Okay, so that's one thing that's really significant about Ezekiel. The other, and the other thing that is significant about Ezekiel is he um, gives us our first glimpse of the the uh, church, the synagogue of Satan, or the free the Freemasons. Okay, um, and these these weird um, Babylonian worshiping that they did in the inside the temple walls, the temple of Solomon, Solomon's temple that he built for God, that they were doing these abominable things in there. And so we get a, glim a glimpse of the start of that and where that all came from. And then there's also a very interesting uh, thing in there about uh, the watchman, okay, a warning to the watchman. And um, I've shared in one of my videos um, the dream I had about um, the rapture, okay, and looking down upon the earth. I was allowed to look down upon the earth from heaven and see terrible things going on. And the Lord convicted my heart and he said in a stern voice, you let, you know, because my loved ones were on the earth screaming and crying and two were running and one was screaming, you know, and I felt so guilty about that. And he, you know, said in a stern voice, you let it happen. Don't you know that you're a watchman? You know, and then I woke up, and um, I used to do Russian roulette with the with the Bible. You know, you just flip through. Okay, Lord, please show me where you want me to read from today. What you want me to learn today? And you just open up the Bible randomly, right? Well, I did that, and it opened up to Ezekiel chapter thirty-three about the watchman. That if you, you know, if you're called to be a watchman and you do not warn the people to repent then their blood will be required at your hand, okay? Their blood, their, their, their blood is on you, okay? So that's um, another interesting, there's a, it's a very uh, powerful message to the watchmen, and I know there are many watchmen out there. And some watchmen have gotten a little bit tired and they're slacking off a bit, okay? So um, there's a good message in there for you all. There's a good message of repentance. And also there's a prophecy about what's going to happen in the latter days, what's going to happen in the future. Um, how uh, the, some nations will come against Israel and they'll be, you know, the Lord will bring them against Israel and then the Lord will show Israel, you know, who he is by stamping out their enemies. Okay, and also talks about the revival of Israel, okay, the dead, the dead bones. The dry bones, thing, not the dead bones, the dry bones coming together. And that is when Israel became a nation again after being spread out all over the world and being going through the Holocaust, they became a nation in 1948. Okay, so that's a prophecy for that that, that actually came to pass. Okay, so with that said, I am going to go now because it's super cold out today. You wouldn't believe it. It was like minus 5 Celsius, which is what, I don't know, 22 degrees. So, I mean, it's a little bit warmer now. What, what's the temperature now? So the temperature right now, I mean, it's a little bit warmer, but still, it's cold. Uh, it's a whopping. Oh, it says it's updating. It was 45 degrees, so it's starting to drop, though. Oh, and it's going to take forever to update. Oh, it's still 45 degrees. Okay, so it's not too bad. But I'm going to get home before it gets any colder. All right. And with that said, I bless you all in the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Please forgive me for stumbling on my tongue. I'm stepping on my tongue today. I don't know what's wrong with me. Probably not enough sleep. <laughs> anyway, um, until next time, I'm out. I love you all. Uh, if you have a prayer request, please let me know. I'm out. Goodbye.